Oh, hi, Mark. Hi, Jonathan. What are you doing at my desk? I hear you're editing the next Mac address. That's correct, yeah. I thought instead of using this big, cumbersome computer with all these screens, you should edit the next one instead with this. Well, this should be interesting. What? You may have already seen the video Mark edited on the iPad. It's the long-awaited review of the Samsung Viewfinity S9. It turned out pretty good, I think. Final Cut Pro on the iPad is looking like a dream, eh? What is like the dream editing setup for you? I love the concept of touchscreen with editing. That is something that I've always craved. <laughs> just being able to have like a more fluid kind of environment where you can just move things around, draw whatever you need, just yeah, more flexibility and not be restricted to like a mouse and keyboard. So in a previous video, we actually set the iPad up in a different room. Mm -hmm. so do you want to edit in that booth or do I have to set this desk up? That booth's cold. <laughs> Final Cut Pro on the iPad is a big deal, showing just how Apple is committing to the Pro in iPad Pro, because that's basically what you'll need to run it as it requires an M-series chip. You also have the most experience with Final Cut, I think, here. Correct? Probably. It's not just a radical shift in form factor either, because Apple priced this at $7 a month, or $70 for a year. Oh. All right, let's see if this justifies the cost. See, I can get you 10 gig ethernet. Wait, how am I gonna plug this into a monitor? The monitor has a daisy chain port. Where do I get the... Um... You have access to the server, the server oh. in the files app. So if you go, there's one down there. All footage. Content unavailable. Okay, so what we do is we eject the drive and then I'll re you just reconnect it. So it's the server's fault. Always the server's fault. I'm like literally dumbfounded. The folder works on a Mac. There's all the files. The one folder that's not showing up on this iPad is <laughs> the footage folder. So I guess we'll ingest it the manual way. Okay, so we fixed the folder. It just had a weird symbol in the folder name. Yeah, that sounds. Okay, so we got to import the footage. All right, let's do it. Ah. Uh... I don't think it's running off the, the files off the server. I think it's trying to copy them over. Yep, that's what's happening. How much storage is on this one? Oh no, 128? That is not enough. Uh, we, I, need to get a, I need to get a different iPad. So this iPad is also an M1 iPad Pro, but this one has a terabyte of storage. The price difference, staggering. Oh sh**. It's like, it doesn't support it. Is it an MXF? Uh-huh. It's funny because MXF, in theory, should be recognized on most professional editing softwares. I, oh, yeah. Yeah, that is frustrating. That is really dumb. It's literally called material exchange format. Do you, so you want to transcode it to ProRes? ProRes might be the best bet. So essentially to even be able to edit with an artwork flow, the ingest procedure is just completely unworkable because we have to re-encode every clip on a Mac. Just use a Mac then. It took the better part of the day just to get Mark set up to edit on the iPad. Things are not looking good. Something about this experience feels familiar. It reminds me of when Final Cut 10 came out. Back in 2011, most of the video production industry was using the original Final Cut Pro, both Mark and I were, but it was an old 32-bit relic incapable of handling all the new digital codecs that were emerging at the time. Us editors were all eagerly waiting for something new, and that's exactly what we got, Final Cut Pro 10. The new Final Cut Pro has a completely redesigned... It was a disaster. But apparently it's so different from the last version of Final Cut, uh, video and film editors all over Hollywood are having a very hard time adjusting to it, okay? I noticed it was incredibly difficult to use at the start, going in with the mindset of any other NLE that existed up until that point. It required a complete rethink of how you interacted with something as fundamental as the timeline. If you understand it, it's great, better than Premiere even. And then I gave it a shot, timed myself for a few edits, and lo and behold, it was a lot faster. Well, how long did it take to get to that point? To that point. It took about five years. Now, it doesn't bode well for the iPad's version of Final Cut Pro to be ready for professional editors, because Five years is a lot longer than it would take a clear case like this to yellow. Ugh. This looks so gross. Well, enter this video's sponsor, Dbrand's brand new Ghost Case. They threateningly promise that you'll die before it even turns yellow, but like, your phone will die 
long before that. Though not from a drop, because the ghost case has 10 feet of impact protection, while only being 1.2 millimeters thin. It is available exclusively for the latest pro iPhones like this 15 and select fancy Androids. And you can get yours at shortlinus.com. What about talljonathan.com? This new version of Final Cut does feel like a departure. If you're used to the Mac version, you'll find yourself a little lost. The media pane, for instance, is on the right side of the screen instead of the left on a Mac. But this version of Final Cut is nicely optimized for the touch screen. In fact, the best features are because of it. The one cool feature that really stood out to me was the skimming tool for touch. This is genius. For editing on iPad, or any type of touchscreen, having a built-in jog dial that you can open and collapse, it worked great. The other thing is the um, markup for clips, being able to uh, draw things and animate with the pen. I use that multiple times. Being able to highlight something on a page is probably the coolest thing. So you've been editing on Final Cut this video. Mm -hmm. uh, how is it? I was gonna swear at you as a oh. joke, as a joke, but not good. Really? Yeah, I was a lot more optimistic than I should have been. Uh, how so? To be honest, Jonathan, it's more half baked than a Subway cookie. It's missing a lot of essential features, uh, like search for clips. You know, I can organize by name or date or whatever, but that's it. Try sorting by a list. Can you make it a list? There's got to be a way to make it. Wait. No, there's no list view. No, 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 no. There's got to be a list view. There's no list view? There's a list view in files. Why wouldn't there be a list view here? They really assume that you're, you're just wanting to edit I iPhone videos with this. This is a nightmare. They sometimes you can only do certain things with a mouse and keyboard. Sometimes you can only do certain things with touch and a pencil. I want to be able to take this with me and just go anywhere. And I can't if I'm connected to this. The whole idea of flexibility of working anywhere, Final Cut Pro on iPad actually makes it more restrictive. So you have to sit at a desk if you want to edit anything, really. That looks gray-ish. That looks gray? Yeah. You have a vector scope. Amazing. I've never seen a vector scope without a skin tone line. Yeah, let's all try it. Where, where are we on a spectrum gonna, here of... Uh, of uh... I wish you could make the audio meters bigger. It's so tiny. It doesn't tell you what the decibel level is. You can scale to fill a clip in two separate ways. In the crop menu or in the scale menu. Why? They do have three dots up here that gives you access to uh, video tutorials, but uh, you have to pay for it. Okay, okay, Mark, you've said enough. To be fair to this version of Final Cut, the project we gave Mark is a complex one, full of demanding sequences using many microphones plugged into our heavy and professional cameras. They record eight tracks of audio per clip. This causes many headaches because Mark can only manually mute one track of audio at a time on the timeline per clip. Yeah, yeah, they actually made it worse. Like significantly worse, significantly worse than Premiere. Well, the moment that the, I discovered the audio issue, I was like, okay, this is gonna take a lot more time now. Just because of all the extra work I'd have to do for every single clip. Because of all these glitches, this project is taking a lot longer than it should. In fact, it took so long, Reddit was asking where we went. The simple answer was this dang thing. Worse still, we couldn't even finish the video on the iPad because of the way it handles color and audio. How's it going? Uh, it's going. Whoa, what's, what are you doing there? I have a proposal for you. A proposal? Yes. Instead of finishing this Final Cut Pro project in Final Cut Pro, uh -huh. I could finish it in Final Cut Pro. Oh, like For the desktop. computer one. Yeah, yeah. What's the big obstacle? Audio, really. Oh. Uh, like it works, but I'm only getting it out of one ear and I have to use this DAC and it's a bit of a nightmare. 
it's not gonna be a, edited, a video edited fully on iPad. But it's gonna be fully edited on Final Cut Pro. <laughs> I mean, I get it, like we gotta get the video done. Yep. It's already been a while. Two weeks. So <laughs> let's, uh, sure. It's 90% there. It gives you the ability to do these things, but then it takes away the one thing that you need to make it actually work the way you want it to. So as a result, it just slows the whole process down. Oh, it's bouncing. <sighs> okay. Yeah, wow, it even keeps all of my marking, uh, my in and out points. Oh, I wonder, can I, can I? <sighs> I deleted it. I feel kind of bad putting Mark up to this. Despite knowing the history, I thought that this version of Final Cut would be a lot farther along than DaVinci Resolve even, which when I tried earlier this year, I only attempted to edit a simple short. Who do you think this is for? I think this is for social media producers. Do you think it would be is even good for them? If you're coming in blind, you might have a better experience than I had. And that's probably the best way to get into this. While Mark has been editing, I've been playing around with the iPad version of Logic Pro that was launched alongside Final Cut. I've never even touched the Mac version of the app before, so I have nothing to be frustrated about. This feels like a big step up from GarageBand that introduces me to more advanced audio concepts. The question is though, how long before I need even more capability? And will the iPad version be able to provide that in time? I'm being hypercritical, obviously, because I just got through editing a MAC address video on an iPad. How much slower is it? Like, what, by what factor, how much slower is it? Nine to one. It takes nine times longer. Yeah. I'm still hopeful. <laughs> it could get better, you know, just like Final Cut 10 when it first got released. It did get better, and this could get better. Okay, last question. Does Final Cut Pro for the iPad Pro, make the iPad Pro Pro. No. Thanks, Mark, for editing that video on the iPad. If you think that a tablet is the next foray for professional work, give this video a like. And if you missed the video that we made, you might as well subscribe. I'm curious in the comments below how long you think it's gonna take for Final Cut to catch up.